good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondent Club of Japan. Uh, my name is Pio Emilia. I am uh, moderating today's press conference. Uh, today's uh, guests are going to talk about uh, this uh, issue, Tibet's stolen child. In other words, the Panchen Lama. That's a very sad story. And uh, the gentlemen here that are going to speak today have published a book. And uh, that's what I, we are going to uh, discuss today. Uh, let me introduce the guests first of all, starting from my right here, uh, representative of uh, liaison office of His Holiness the Dalai Lama in Japan. Um, Arya, right? Arya Tetsuvan Gyalpo. I'm sorry, but <laughs> Tibetan language is very, very complicated. <laughs> and then uh, uh, Professor uh, Hirano uh, from uh, uh, Tokyo University, and uh, Mr. Kitai Daisuke from Amnesty International Japan. And uh, we will also have at the end of the presentations a reading of a message by uh, Shimomura Hakobun, chairman of All Japan Parliamentary Group of Tibet, read by uh, Fudetani Karma of the Tibetan community here in Japan. Okay, so let's uh, start from uh, you, um, Arya San. Welcome back at the club. You have been many times here with His Holiness uh, the Dalai Lama, and uh, this is a good occasion to remind you that we are wishing uh, for His Holiness to come again, even virtually, yes, on, yes. Uh, on a platform. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> Good morning, konnichiwa and touch the leg. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank you all for uh, coming to attend this uh, book release and a press conference. Uh, despite the coronavirus pandemic difficult situation here in Tokyo. But uh, as you see, for the Tibetan, today is a very important day, and we would like to send a clear message to the Chinese leadership in Beijing that uh, we and the international community have not forgotten Penchen Lama, a six-year-old child who was uh, kidnapped by the Chinese communist regime some 26 years ago. And I would like also to thank uh, Foreign Correspondent Club Japan for giving us this opportunity to organize this book release and the press conference. <coughs> and I thank uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Hirano here, Tokyo University, and Mr. Kitai from Amnesty International for joining us and sharing their views on the enforced uh, disappearance of the Pension Lama. And I also thank Ms. Uh, Madam Fudetani Karma for coming here to read the uh, message of Mr. Shimamura Hakubun, who was a former uh, Japanese uh, education minister, and currently he's the uh, chairman of uh, uh, All Japan Parliament in Group for Tibet. So let me go <coughs> with the, my statements and the press release. So as you see, like a uh, plight of the 11th Pension Lama, the Gendin Choi Nima, uh, truly represents the brutal and the repressive nature of the Chinese Communist regime and their brutal rule in Tibet for the last 70 years. And the Communist China does not believe in religions, and they say that uh, religion is poisons. And for the Tibetans, reincarnated Lamas are highly respected in our society. And Penchen Lama is uh, considered a second most uh, important Rianggin Lama in Tibetan Buddhism. And the 10th Penchen Lama, that is Lobsang Chuji Gelsen, died, he died at the age of 51 in 1989. And he also died under very dubious circumstances. He died after making a speech in which he criticized the Chinese policies in Tibet. Later, his holiness the Dalai Lama recognized a six-year-old child, Gendin Chochi Nima, 
as the reincarnation of the 10th Pension Lama on 14th May 1995. But three days after that, the Chinese communist leaderships, they kidnapped the boy along with the family and their whereabouts is still not known. The communist leadership, they know, they know nothing about the religion and the reincarnation process and they don't believe in religion also. But what they have done is uh, they have selected their own pension lama, the Gelsen Nurbu, a small boy, and installed him as a pension lama. Now what they have done is they are forcing this false pension lama on the Tibetan monks and the lay people. They are forcing the Tibetans to respect and to revere and to prostrate before this false pension lama that they have made. It's a puppet pension lama. So today, it marks the 26th anniversary of the disappearance of the 11th Pension Lama. And a child and a family kept in incommunicado for more than 26 years by a government who claims itself as a superpower is totally a wrong thing and is beyond the comprehension of international norm and understanding. And today we are very happy and pleased to release this book, the translation, a Japanese translation of the original book, Tibet's Stolen Child, by Department of International and uh, Information and International Relations of Central Tibetan Administration. And through this book, we hope to inform the Japanese brothers and sisters, media, and international community about the gross violation of child's right, human right, and religious right that is happening in Tibet. And we sincerely pray and hope that uh, some good sense will prevail on the Chinese leadership and release Pension Lama, his family, and his teacher at the earliest. And through this book release and press conference, we would like to present before the Chinese leadership the following five points, demands. First, to come out with the full information on the real Pension Lama, his family, and his teacher, Chattel Rinpoche. And second, to release Pension Lama, Genjin Choki Nima, his family member, and his teacher, Chattel Rinpoche, at the earliest. And the third point, to stop interfering in a Tibetan religious matter and selection of the reincarnation of Dalai Lama, and to revoke the state's Religious Affairs Bureau Order No. 5, which they have passed on 13 July 2007. And the fourth point, to stop the militarization of Tibetan Plato, sinicization of the Tibetan identity, and destruction and exploitation of Tibetan rich mineral and water resources. And the fifth point, to initiate a dialogue with the Central Tibetan Administration, representative of the Central Tibetan Administrations on the genuine autonomy for all the Tibetans. So these five points, I would like that China should work on it and fulfill our demand. And we request the international community and global leaders and the media to urge the Chinese leadership to consider these genuine and just demands of the Tibetan people and to tell the Chinese leadership that holding a child and his family in communicado for more than 26 years is a gross violation of child's right, human right, religi religious right, and against the international norms. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aya San. Um, okay, let's go to Professor Hirano, please. Okay. My name is Hirano, belonging to the University of Tokyo, mainly studying the, the history of China after Qin Dynasty and ethnic conflicts in China. The problem of Pan Chen Lama's disappearance uh, by China is not known widely in the global community uh, up to now. But now, the crisis of human rights in Xinjiang and the crisis of liberty in Hong Kong are very serious and uh, getting worldwide attention. Uh, I consider the fact of missing Panchen Lama 
it shows the way of CCP's human rights violations for more than five, uh, 50, uh, 25 years. So I consider just now the global community should focus on this tragedy of Panchen Lama. The tense Panchen Lama loved Tibet and China. So he wrote the 70,000 characters criticism uh, to the CCP's policy. Maybe this, maybe this is the best uh, political document in the history of PRC. But because of the liberal mind of, te, of the tense Panchen Lama, CCP want the next Panchen Lama to be obedient. They intervene the process of choosing the 11th Panchen Lama and let the people, uh, let the Tibetan people believe this puppet, Mr. Gensen Norb, is the Panchen Lama who is patriotic to Chinese nationalism. But how this way destroyed the tradition and the vitality of Tibetan Buddhism and Tibetan culture, society, this booklet explains the details. Today, what I'd like to add is why the CCP and the government of PRC insist that they have the right of choosing the incarnations of Tibetan Buddhism. They say the choosing of the, the incarnation must do the lottery, must use, uh, must use the lottery using the golden, uh, golden pot. This way is suggested by the Emperor Qianlong in 1792. And China claims this as one of the best evidences of Qin Dynasty's sovereignty to Tibet. CCP says, uh, more than China inherited the sovereignty of Qin Dynasty, but the Golden Pot Lottery was rarely or never used by the Tibetans, especially the great reincarnations in the modern history, the 13th Dalai Lama, the 14th Dalai Lama, and the 10th Panchen Lama were not chosen by using Golden Pot. The most important thing in this process is the action of searching reincarnation and selection by Tibetan Buddhism itself. So the CCP's claim a Chinese sovereignty over Tibet and right to select reincarnations is not true. Then CCP says the process of choosing the 11th Panchen Lama taken by Tibetan Buddhism itself especially through the communication between uh, Panchen Lama's home base, uh, Tashi Lumpo Monastery, and the 14th Dalai Lama, is violating the established, uh, by, violating the rule established by Qianlong, destroying the sovereignty of China and national unity. From 1995, CCP began the patriotic education in the whole China and in Tibet. The main contents of this education and the propaganda is to do condemn, to condemn the 14th Dalai Lama and the Tibetan separatism from China. Then let the Tibet, 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 Tibetan people believe Mr. Gensen Nobu uh, is the 11th Panchen Lama. I saw a lot of people in Tibet are in deep sorrow because one of the great symbols of Tibetan Buddhism got tragedy. And the pressure of Chinese nationalism is serious in this 15, uh, 25 years. But CCP is a party of revolution who denied religion and denied pre-modern governance. Emperor Qianlong believed Tibetan Buddhism and he was the patron of Tibetan Buddhism. Why CCP, PRC, use such way to explain the sovereignty to Tibet? I consider it means that the only way to connect Tibet and China is the legitimacy based on Tibetan Buddhism, not based on Chinese nationalism and communism uh, or the value of Chinese civilization. In the modern history, China has destroyed 
decivilization of Tibetan Buddhism by using the value of Chinese nation nationalism civilization. So they have no legitimacy to intervene in the process of choosing the reincarnations of Tibetan Buddhism. Now, China must liberate the true 11th Panchen Lama, Gendun Chuki Nima, and return the right of choosing reincarnations to Tibetan Buddhism itself, make a new conversation to establish true peace between Tibetans and other minorities in China and peoples in Hong Kong. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hirano Sensei. Now, representative of uh, Amnesty International, uh, sorry, uh, Kitai Daisuke. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Kitai Daisuke, a volunteer of the China team of Amnesty Japan. And after we confirmed the news that six years old Gendun Chuki Nima and his family have been missing from their home. Amnesty International called on the Chinese authorities to disclose their whereabouts and demand that any restrictions are lifted immediately and mm. that he and his family are free to return to their village and live without restriction or harassment. Since then, in these 26 years, Chinese authorities claim something like he has grown up healthily or received free compulsory education or passed a college e uh, entrance exam or now has a job. And neither he nor his family wishes to be disturbed in their current normal lives. But, however, how can we believe this without hearing his own voice or without an independent investigation. When we talk about the human rights situation in China and Tibet, the lack of accountability is always a problem. Thanks to various efforts of Tibetan people, Chinese people, and the international community, the reality of human rights violation in China and Tibet has been exposed, but it is still not enough. Mm. Access to and from Tibet remained highly restricted, mm. particularly for journalists, academics, and human rights organizations, and making it extremely difficult to investigate and document the human rights situation in the region. Even in United Nations, the Chinese government is trying to change the rule. We are worried about China's effort to distort the mandate of the UN Human Rights Council by promoting so-called cooperation over accountability and opposing initiatives to bring scrutiny of serious rights violations in countries around the world. When the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Special Procedures, and dozens of states urged China to comply with international human rights standards, China contended that they were improper remarks that grossly interfered with China's sovereignty. Therefore, a global coalition of 321 civil society groups, including Amnesty International, published an open letter in September last year calling for urgently create an independent international mechanism to investigate and address the Chinese government's human rights violations. A state that tries to hold itself above any kind of scrutiny presents a fundamental threat to human rights. Amnesty members will continue to focus on the situation in Tibet and China, urging accountability and protecting human rights. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so now, uh, could you come up to the stage and uh, yeah, yeah. 
read the, the message, yes. Uh, Mrs. Fudetani Karma is a representative of the Tibetan community and is going to read the, the message of uh, MP Shimomura Hakubun, who's the chairman of All Japan Parliamentary Group for Tibet. Hello, Teshtele and Konnichiwa. Statement of Mr. Shimomura Hakabun, Member of Parliament and President of the All Party Japanese Parliamentary Support Group for Tibet, on the 26th anniversary of the disappearance of the 11th Pension Lama Gendin Chukinima. We, the All Party Japanese Parliamentary Support Group for Tibet, are seriously concerned over the repression and deteriorating human rights situation in Tibet as the Chinese Communist regime is increasingly becoming more authoritarian. With the invasion of Tibet, China has been using the relationship between the Dalai Lama and the Pension Lama as a means to sow discord among the Tibetan people and destroy their religion and culture. After selecting their puppet Pension Lama, the Chinese government kidnapped the Pension Lama recognized by His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama and imprisoned him as the world's youngest political prisoner. He is still in detention since the last 25 years. It is a serious humanitarian crisis rarely seen in the world, and it would never be acceptable. We resolutely condemn the Chinese Communist Party's religious persecution and express deep concern over the Chinese Communist Party trying to destroy Tibetan cultural, religious, and linguistic identities. China must announce the whereabout of the Pension Lama as soon as possible and release him immediately by heeding the call of the international community. Of course, the Chinese Communist Party has neither the right to select the successor of the Dalai Lama as well as the Pension Lama. No one in the world has this right except the Tibetan people. The Tibetan people, based on their Buddhist tradition, have the right to choose their religious leader and place of worship without interference from any country, the international community should firmly respect and defend such right. We, the All Party Japanese Parliamentary Support Group for Tibet, will cooperate with countries around the world that share the same values of freedom, democracy, and the rule of law. We welcome the resolution adopted in the parliament around the world against China and that we are determined to act together. Thank you. Okay, thank you for keeping uh, the scheduled time. Now we open the floor to uh, questions from uh, the floor and online. I don't have any online questions for the time being, so is anybody in the room here that wants to make uh, questions? Please. Okay. Well, I guess uh, I'll uh, take over <laughs> and ask a few questions. Um, I think that the story of uh, the Panchen Lama is, uh, for those who have interest in Tibet affairs, is quite uh, renowned. Um, but uh, could you tell us if you have uh, any direct or even indirect uh, information uh, where he is uh, now mm. and uh, how he's doing. Uh, the, the last uh, official information we had, I think, is, was a few years ago when uh, Chinese UN ambassador, I think, uh, stated officially that he is Genki, he's, uh, he's very happy, he's uh, ah. a student, uh, has a job, uh, and he doesn't want to get uh, involved with anybody, uh, and he's happy pursuing his own life. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have any updated uh, information about this? Yeah, so the thing is that uh, he has been, uh, he has disappeared. Now it is 26 years. We still don't have any proper information. All these years, we have been Tibetans and the Tibet support group, even the immunity, Internationals, we have been trying to get information, the safety of the boy and their family, but we didn't get in information. Last year, uh, we uh, made a concrete uh, effort 
got involved the worldwide parliamentarians and human rights people to pressure the Chinese to get some information out of it. And as Pio has said rightly, now their spokespersons, now out of that pressure, what they have said is that the boy is fine and then he is now working and he and his parents don't want to be disturbed. So that's why we are uh, respecting their privacies. So this is a very unsatisfactory reply, response, and we don't believe it. So what we have said at that time during the press release is that if the Chinese authorities are very serious about what they have said, that if the boy is fine, then he, they sh should let us know where he is. And he should also, the Communist Party government, they should also let the international community and the diplomat to meet the boy and hear from himself whether he is doing fine or not, whether he really wants to be kept captive and uh, stay alone and don't want to be get disturbed. So why China is doing this right now is that Buddhism is a very powerful in Tibet and Tibetan people have a great faith in the religious things. Mm. Now, people listen to the Lamas and the reincarnated Lamas, not to the CCP leaderships. Mm. Now they want that control the religious leader. That's why they have their puppet pension lama. And through this pension, puppet pension lama, they are trying to force the Tibetan and let them listen to what CCP is saying. So this is exactly what now they are planning about the reincarnation of His Holiness Dalai Lama also. They keep on saying, just as Professor Hirano has said, they just keep on saying that golden earth method, it was invented by the Emperor King Long and they have a right to select. First Dalai Lama was born in, in 1391. That is 1391, and the Qing Dynasty came into existence in 1644. So there is more than 200 years difference. How come they can say that they have a right when the reincarnation process is already there in Tibet? Ansem, may uh, since you touched upon this, uh, may I ask you what is your uh, prediction or your fear that? Uh, we all hope uh, the later the possible, but when uh, His Holiness uh, will uh, disappear, how would the Chinese uh, mm. government try to interfere in the process of uh, yes. the new Dalai Lama? Mm. Definitely they will try to interfere. Now, the irony and the contradictory part of this is that world has recognized His Holiness Dalai Lama as an apostle of peace and non-violence. And he has been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1989. But it is Chinese communist regime who has always been saying that the Dalai Lama is a devil, wolf in the sheep's disguise. And they keep on saying a very bad thing about him. Now, if he is a separatist, wolf, and sh wolf in a sheep's disguise, why they want his reincarnation? This is a very funny part of it. So they keep on saying that he is a devil, he has a horn, and he is a wolf, but they want that his reincarnation should be recognized by the Chinese Communist Party only. So they will definitely interfere, but then it is very clear. Last year, there is an international Tibet support group meeting in which we have passed, they have passed a resolution said that China has a no role authority to interfere in a Tibetan religious matter, especially in selecting the reincarnation of His Holiness Dalai Lama. And then there is a meeting of a meeting of all India Tibet support group people. Same resolution has been made. Then there is a meeting of the old Tibetan communities in exile from Nepal and from other countries also. They have also similarly uh, passed a resolution saying that if China interfere in these matters, they will not uh, listen to these things. And then there is a whole meeting of our Tibetan high lamas, reincarnated lama, in which they also said that anything China does will not be tolerated. Now, last year, 2020, US government has passed a Tibet Policy and Support Act, in which they have strongly said that China cannot interfere in this Tibetan religious matter, and if they insist on selecting the <clears throat> his Dalai Lama's reincarnation, 
then they will, at a coxai level, at international level, they will <coughs> oppose this move. Now, even the European Parliament, Australian Parliament, they are also agreeing to it. So if China does these things, then it will only make themselves uh, a very unaccountable and irresponsible governments before the whole community, international uh, community. Uh, any questions from the floor? Okay, then I'll, I'll keep asking. <laughs> um, we all know that there is uh, another Panchem Lama, the so-called the official one. I'm not sure I pronounce uh, his name correctly. Gyeong San Norbu? Gyeong Norbu, yes. Okay. Uh, he has been selected through you know, certain system with some. Uh, uh, I am not in a position to judge uh, the system that it was used, but certainly it does exist, and uh, he goes to Tibet uh, from time to time. Of course, accompanied by some Chinese authorities. And uh, um, what can you tell us about the support? that uh, the official uh, 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 Panchen Lama uh, has uh, recently achieved. I read that in the past he was uh, totally uh, refused, but that recently he has been able to uh, gain some kind of support. Yeah, so I will speak on this uh, bit, and then I would like to have uh, Professor Hirano also speak on this. My feeling is that when he was selected, because I, Tibetan community, they also feel very sorry for this Gershin Nurbu. He has been forced to do what he don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And his parents, uh, they are also, we feel that uh, they are in problem. Because if they don't do what the Communist, Communist Party say, they will be in a problem. So. Till now, there is a no acceptance from the Tibetan sides, and from his side also, I think he was very reluctant. That's why he has not appeared. And I don't know whether he has properly studied the Buddhist text and the logic that he was supposed to study, whether he was allowed to study or not. Now, what is happening right now? What is happening right now is China has now made a such a system in Tibet that nothing could be done without the permission or without the information of the Chinese Communist Party. And then now people, even if they say that they want to uh, practice a religion or they want a Tibetan language to be taught, they are termed as a separatist and then put in a jail and tortured. Now people cannot do anything. In such circumstances, now China has, what they, they have done is uh, they are sending this Panchen Lama, the false Panchen Lama, with the officials to the Tibetan villages and forcing the Tibetan to accept him and rever him and respect him. Now, Tibetan people have no options. They do it. Now, when the foreign dignitaries comes, this Paul Spencer Lama was shown to this foreign dignitary saying that, uh, oh, there is a religious freedom. And now he has to say that uh, there is a religious freedom in Tibet and this, all these, these kind of things. And now there is a fear that the Chinese Communist Party, what they will do is uh, they will start sending him outside to the Buddhist countries and represent Tibetan Buddhism. So this is a very dangerous trend. And Chinese Communist Party, who does not believe in religion, who does not know anything, A, B, C, D of the Buddhism itself and the reincarnation process, if they continue to interfere in this Tibetan religious matter, this is not a Tibet issue. This is a whole international religious issue that we all should be aware of. You want to eat okay. Okay. Uh, about this problem, uh, my feeling it, it is very difficult to uh, how to how to say. But uh, when I visit it, it, it Tibet uh, sometimes, uh, everywhere I meet are uh, everywhere uh, the Tibetans say uh, this problem is one of the most difficult uh, problem to uh, Tibetan people. Because uh, Chinese gov Chinese uh, policy governance says this is the Panchen Lama. So, and there is a patri patriotic education. So, they must uh, they must uh, listen uh, to CCP and Chinese government. So, they basically 
uh, what, uh, what to say, uh, basically, they, in the offic official, official time, they uh, accept uh, Mr. Kensen Norbu is the Panchen Lama. But uh, in the private time, they all say, uh, I don't know how to say, because uh, the reincarnations are based on the tradition of Tibetan Buddhism. And Tibetan Buddhism itself uh, choose, uh, choose uh, reincarnations for more than uh, uh, 70 or 800 years. The uh, liaison between a monastery of Tash Rumpo and Pan uh, Dalai Lama, 14th Dalai Lama, is based on this tradition. So the uh, Gendu Chuk uh, Nima may be the true Panchen Lama, but they cannot say in outside, only in private, they say. But if uh, they are found, <laughs> if, they are, if they are saying was found, they, they will be punished. So it is very risky to speak out to me. So uh, I, I, uh, I cannot say how, how they, uh, how they uh, think about this problem. It is very difficult. Uh, maybe one of the most difficult problem in modern Tibet. Thank you very much. OK, we have a, a question from uh, online. Uh, from Noriko Hirahara of Gigi Tsushin, Gigi Press. Uh, the question is, what do you think of the current movement to boycott Beijing Olympics 2022 over human rights issues? Those are ideas. Uh, so, yeah. So this is, uh, as I told, our stand is that China should be incorporated with the international community. We have to have a very good relation with the China. World has believed that by working with the China, China will change. They will become less repressive, and they will come to understand the international norms. That's why the world has still now cooperated with the China. But the result has not been what we have thought. Now, say for example, 2008, there is a Beijing Olympic, in which His Holiness the Dalai Lama also said that China is the most populous countries. They should have the right to hold the Olympics. They should be allowed to do it so that they can also understand the international norm and become better. His Holiness supported Beijing Olympics. And Tibet activists and many human rights people, they also objected that China should not be given the right to do this. But China at that time agreed that if they are allowed to do hold the Olympics, they will relax on the human right repressions and all those things. But what is the result now? Till 2008, there have been about 2,000, 3,000 Tibetans regularly coming to India, studying and then going back and studying, uh, staying back in India also. After 2008, repression increased. So many, and there was a revolt also there. There was a problem. Now, people, it was so repressive and so tightly controlled that people coming from Tibet started dwindling. And then now, right now, what we have is that no, nobody could come from Tibet now. Now, Tibet right now has become a police state. It is totally militarized now. Now, the, all these experience shows that by accommodating the China in a way that we have positively do it, is this really being a fruit? America has also said, till now, we have worked with China with the hope that by working with them, China will change. No, now they have realized it is, if we don't change China, China is going to change us. The fundamental, human rights, democracy, and human values. All this value system is being changed. So it is high time 
that uh, democratic country and those who support the democracy, human right, rule of law, we all need to work together and tell China that what you are doing is a wrong thing. You may have Olympic, but that doesn't mean that uh, you have a right to <coughs> repress all the minorities and bully the people around. See, right now the coronavirus, where it did, did it come from? We are all here with this mask. Why? Is China taking responsibility about it? But then it is very important that we must tell them that they should at least become a responsible community of this international community. And they have still not apologized, and, but then they have taken the advantage of the pandemic and tried to get into other people's territories, like in India, Bhutan, Nepal, even in Senkaku Island. Mm. So this is not good. In that context, we need to think it is not Tibet's problem, it is an international problem. So may, may I take this uh, just to sum up? Uh, may I take all your long answer as a yes, we should boycott the Olympics? Yeah. <laughs> That is why I leave, I leave the matters <laughs> for the international community to decide. Okay. Because what I'm trying to say is that uh, in the past, what we have been seeing is that if you want to know China, you need to study and understand Tibet. The problem right now, we have all this before, is that we have not studied pro uh, Tibet problem properly. Had India, had Japan, had world taken a care of the Tibetan problem at that time, these kinds of things may not have happened. So even now, we have a right times. So we have to have a courage to say, bad thing is bad thing, good thing is good things. If we don't have, still don't have a courage to say these things, then world is doomed. I think future, the world that we are going to give to our children is going to be very bleak. Well, let me follow up on this uh, issue of uh, China vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world. I mean, you are perfectly aware that uh, recently a lot of uh, condemnations and accusation to China has been done on Xinjiang, uh, Hong Kong, uh, threats to <coughs> Taiwan, and Tibet, of course. <coughs> but uh, if I may say, the reaction of the international community doesn't seem to be very effective up to now. Uh, there is a lot of condemnations. Uh, national parliaments uh, are um, having their own resolutions. But uh, in reality, China is uh, still there, and everybody wants and probably needs to make business with China. Uh, since you are represented here in Japan, what uh, would you expect more from Japan? Or are you satisfied with the Japanese uh, uh, approach to China? Yeah, so from my point, yeah, I, first thing is that I would like to thank the Japanese government and Japanese people for all the things that they could do for Tibet within their uh, limited capacity and resources. And then for most of the country, First thing is that uh, first priority is their own country and the security. And then I feel that I have been saying this many times also, it is very important for Japan to have a very good relation with China. Only by having a good relation with China can we solve many problems. Just by being aggressive and trying to <clears throat> reply aggressively will not be the solutions. Mm. Now this is exactly what the China is doing. China don't see reasons. They just see, find, see themselves as a superpower. They, they act like a bully. And this is wrong. In Buddhism, we say that ignorance is not good. China is right now is living in its ignorance. Mm. So they have to come out. So we have to pity. We have to see that the Chinese leaderships need to change. And my feeling is that it is not China, it's not Chinese people who are repressive, who are bully. It is the Chinese communist leadership who are ignorant and who are repressive and who are doing all these bad things to divert their attention and to fool their, the Chinese people itself. In this, in this way, I feel that 
Japan should develop a good relation with China so that many things could be moved in a positive direction. But at the same time, if they are doing a wrong things, if they are con <coughs> violating the human right, religious right, or if they are trying to violate or destroy the very fundamental values that, are, <coughs> that we have, then it is high time that Japan should rise with other power and say that what China is doing is the wrong things. This is not for Japan, this is not for Tibet, but this is for whole humanity, for all our children. Otherwise, if the value system that China is trying to impose <coughs> some years ago, they have been trying to value, uh, impose their own value system, communist value systems, repressive natures, through Confucius Institutes. Now the world have realized what this is all about. Now these Confucius Institutes are getting closed. Similarly, now we need to have, uh, Japan and Japanese people need to have a gut and a feeling to stand by the universal value, moral, moral and ethics, and to tell the Chinese that we, sh we need to stay together peacefully, but at the same time, your bully attitude and what you are doing wrong thing is not a good thing. It's not good for everybody, not even for China itself. Does uh, Hirano Sensei or uh, uh, Daisuke have any comment on the Japanese uh, uh, position on China? <laughs> Uh, it is very difficult, but uh, Why? I mean, you are Japanese. You are a sensei. because uh, there academic is, freedom. Uh, because there is a, a economic connection between China, so and uh, especially uh, researching uh, the researchers of China. Uh, a lot of people uh, studied in China by free, by 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 the money of Ch uh, Chinese government. So a lot of people cannot, cannot say about this. But I have never studied in China, only backpacked in China. And so I have, uh, I have a free hand. Uh, I, 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 I also uh, have, uh, I have this uh, same notion uh, uh, with, uh, I have the same notion with Ari Aryasan. Uh, to, to change China, the more com the, maybe we have to pay more attention to communicate with China, but uh, so because there is a lot of people in China and there there are a lot of uh, notions about ethnic problems and international uh, international affairs. All of uh, it. It is not all of the people in China uh, who sh shares the same notion with CCP or Global Times. Uh, but there is a heavy oppression uh, in China. So people cannot say uh, uh, what, they, what they think. So firstly, uh, we, we have to change the Chinese circumstances about uh, human rights, but uh, it, uh, maybe it will uh, need a lot of uh, very long times uh, when this uh, situation will change, I cannot, I cannot say. But the, the process is very important. Thank you very much. Well, um, now, Amnesty do not call for boycott or sanctions. And maybe, the same as Ariasan said, uh, we think that dialogue is very important. And dialogue, only dialogue can change uh, those oppressive uh, uh, governments. Uh, but but uh, I think that Japanese government effort and also Japanese civil society's effort to dialogue with Chinese government is not enough. So I think we should do much more thing to dialogue with them. That's my opinion. Thank you. Well, uh, we are approaching to the end. Uh, let me ask you a final question, Arya-san. 
Uh, that's about uh, the position, the official position of um, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, who, if I am not wrong, if I'm correct, uh, he is not anymore because he renounced the political leader of Tibet, right? He is now just a he spiritual is. leader. He, he told me and many people that he is just a monk. Okay? Simple Buddhist man. A simple Buddhist man. Okay. Um, a few months ago, I had the opportunity of asking uh, the Chinese ambassador in Italy uh, whether he thought uh, possible that uh, His Holiness the Pope or the Dalai Lama would ever visit China under whatever capacity. And he said uh, that uh, the Pope uh, is uh, probably going to happen. Uh, he didn't mention when. But uh, for the Dalai Lama to set foot in China again, he would uh, have to renounce to any claim of secession and separatism, which I believe he did already. Am I right? Yes, that's he, right. Several times he said that he's not seeking any more separation, independence, but just full autonomy according with the Chinese constitution, right? Yes. So how are, you know, we all know that in the past, uh, and probably even presently, there are some negotiations on the various level going on. Are there right now negotiations going on between China officials, China government delegates, and uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama representatives uh, in order to make this happen? Some people say that his Holiness could uh, once go to China as uh, you know as a spiritual leader, but not to Tibet, just to make some teachings around China. Because, correct me if I am wrong, uh, the Buddhism is uh, spreading in China, and not only in Tibet. I mean, uh, freedom of religion may not be recognized as uh, we have in the West, but certainly there are a lot of uh, Buddhist. Uh, people in China that would uh, certainly welcome his holiness. Yes, that's a very important and relevant questions. Now, as I told you before, the China, his holiness, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, and he's an apostle of peace and nonviolence. He is accepted in a, throughout the international community as a messenger of peace. But, and he has nothing, he has uh, exiled government, or oh, whatever we say, the Central Tibetan Admission, we have nothing. We don't have any army or anything. But then, the, although China is very powerful, militarily, economically, but then they are very, very afraid of one person, that is His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So to that extent, the peace has a, peace and non-violence has power. It proves, despite the old missiles and all the tanks, helicopters, and military <clears throat> structures that the China has, they are still afraid of his soldiers, Dalai Lama. That is clearly said in 2007, I think, when Jiang Zemin, when his soldiers' visit to China was discussed, what Jiang Zemin has said, if we allow Dalai Lama to enter China, everything will go mad we won't be able to control our people. To that extent, the China is afraid of Dalai Lama. Why? You mean, because, uh, you mean visit uh, China or visit Tibet? Yeah, visit China. In Tibet, they don't allow, <laughs> of course. So even to visit China. In, so that's why what they have done is that why Dalai Lama's very word is censored. His photos are censored. And they keep on telling us the people indoctrinate, saying that the Dalai Lama is a devil, separatist, these kind of things. This is all to tell the people and the Chinese youngster that Dalai Lama is a separatist and a bad things. Now, inwardly, they are so fearful about the Dalai Lama because they believe, in a way, many scholars have said that real separatist is the Chinese communist leadership. See what happened in uh, Larungar and Yachengar. Mm. Tibetan monasteries, where many Chinese people, they came. Tibetan monks and nuns are there. 
Japan and Chinese, they come together and learn Buddhism, practice together. They're living in a peace. This is very dangerous to the China. So what they have done, they need to come out with a policy to separate the China and the Tibetans. So they had closed restrictions were put on the monasteries. Chinese were <coughs> expelled out of uh, the monastery. Many Tibetans, monks and nuns were expelled out of the monastery. They are separating the Tibetan and Chinese. They don't want their China and Tibetan to live together. One thing. Second thing, in 2008, Tibetans have submitted a memorandum for, for genuine autonomy for all the Tibetans. What does that memorandum has? That memorandum has said that we would like to live with the China, but then we need freedom and autonomy to practice our religion and language. And this is, is very dangerous for China because this is exactly what is said in the Chinese constitution itself, that minorities, they have a right for autonomy, for their language and for religions. Now, if this comes to know, if the Chinese people comes to know that what Tibetans are saying is already in a constitution and the communist leadership is not doing it, Chinese communist leadership could be sued in a Chinese court itself because they are violating the, violating the constitution itself. So who is the separatist now? So it is the Chinese communist leadership who is separatist. So they, they, they will not allow His Holiness Dalai Lama to visit China because they fear that if His Holiness visit China, whole thing will go topsy-turvy. Their Communist Party <coughs> reign will be over because till now what they have been doing is uh, all telling the lies to the uh, Chinese people. Okay, thank you very much. Any question? No? Okay. So. Thank you very much for coming today. And again, I hope to welcome here soon, along with His Holiness, <laughs> on Zoom, of course. Yes, yes. <laughs> on the screen. And, and thank you very much for uh, coming. And uh, in future also, if you need any information about Tibet, we have our office in Anishi Ochiai, Shinjuku. I will give you my uh, visiting card also. Uh, anytime you are. Uh, free to um, visit our office, and we'll be happy to provide you with any information on Tibet. Thank you very much. Let me remind you all uh, online that uh, on the 20th, we will have uh, the Russian ambassador uh, coming here. So please mark it on your agenda. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.